it off to uh, Aviad from Mellanox. Uh, again, continuing on uh, uh, the, SI, the SI software overviews. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope we will find the slides. Um, I'll present myself and uh, what uh, we're trying to do. Actually, I'm not going to talk about Which, how do I close it? You can close it only here. You okay. cannot do that here. Okay. I don't know. Okay, until the slides uh, uh, are brought up, let me present what I'm going to talk and what I'm not going to talk about today. I'm not talk going to talk in this a presentation about specific silicon, including myself. I'm going to talk about how can we change, bring up of, a, a, of protocol stack. We have new protocol stack. We truly want to disaggregate between protocol stacks and underlying hardware. This is what SAI is all about, and I think that this is what open compute network, uh, OCP networking software is all about. So basically, we do want to be able to have a protocol stack that is truly hardware agnostic, okay, to, to some extent. It runs my pro our protocols, and basically we can develop a protocol stack without knowing what is the underlying hardware, and then the same protocol stack should work on any given hardware if it's using SI interfaces. So. I can bring up, uh, I have it in my, huh? cool, okay, so this is the topic, it doesn't increment, It's in PDF. That that's the format that we send. Maybe that's the problem. Just say next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Omar. Next slide. What is the uh, so the motivation? As I said, we we really want to achieve hardware agnostic protocol stack. What is the current state? What happens today? So yes, we have defined SI. So we have a common API. Uh, colleagues from uh, 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 Cavium has said, yes, we are, we are working in SI community on SI behavioral model. Let's talk a little bit about behavioral model. Behavioral model is about a year and a half of a work. Um, within a community, multiple sil silicon vendors are sitting in the same room and trying to define a pseudo hardware. It's quite hard. Every hardware has its own, every silicon piece has its own unique capabilities. And trying to define a hardware, a pseudo hardware that actually logically wise can pass traffic or can forward packets and find the use cases that addresses multiple silicon vendor is sound mission impossible. Well, the community have made it. Okay, made it meaning that we have a very detailed Visio a, a, a visual framework that describes every block within the pipeline. Okay, and I will show an example immediately. But the, the problem is, next slide, the problem is that Visio, do, a, a Visio cannot forward packets. The current Visio framework supports the following flows and you can see a very, very long list of, of uh, uh, building blocks within the pipeline basically almost everything. There are some stuff that uh, is not there. Um, we have uh, MPLS is it, that is yet to define and other stuff within the behavioral model. But any data center and even some a, a, a cloud level of a switch router can be implemented an application on top of, logically, on top of such a rich pipeline. And you can see an example 
a pipeline block, you go into an a, a, a ingress port, you do a lookup in your ACL, you go to do a layer two bridge, a, a, and including looking on the, on the VLAN, doing spanning tree, doing FDB lookup, and then egress ACL and go to the egress port. That's an example of multiple blocks within the pipeline. Next slide, please. So you can see every, within the pipeline, and no, you're not supposed to be able to read that. <laughs> I know it is small, but just to get in a picture, you can see that packet goes, is there a laser, laser marker here? No. Never mind. You can see that packet goes in. They go into different stages within the pipeline, and they may or may not hit, you, you can skip some of those building blocks until you get all the way to the egress side. So every functionality within this pipeline is described. What is the logic? What is the match action table do? And then you can really implement or see how the packet is supposed to traverse this logical pipeline. Again, all the major or all the hardware vendors that participate within uh, the SAI community agrees to this logical pipeline, which on its own, it's a big, big step. Omar? Thank you. So, as, as I said, in order to forward packets, that when you put them into the Visio, they don't, they don't get on the other port. So, basically, you can only look at the Visio and try to understand what it should do, but it's not sufficient, right? If we truly want to write a hardware agnostic application, um, you need to see that the packet works. And what we're trying to do is formal some kind of a contract, a contract between protocol stack vendor or protocol stack implementer and the underlying uh, hardware. And signing that contract, meaning that if I have some kind of a software emulation of a switch, I can really test that my application works on any hardware that, that, that supports that behavioral model. So, Mati here uh, uh, came up with this idea. Thank you, Mati. And uh, Mati is, uh, have very, very uh, uh, good engineers that are working on that, Jonathan and Omer. I hope that next year they will stand here and present their progress within uh, uh, OCP SI on that. And you can, this is an announcement. You are welcome to look. Currently, it's in Mellanox, but we will work in the community to add that to SAI. This is our contribution. Um, they've started with port and bridge implementation. They took the Visio and start writing code. Okay? Now, we were looking for a vehicle that you can describe a pipeline, compile it, and get software that forwards packet. P4 is very good match for that. So basically we took P4. So we are not using P4 to program a hardware, real hardware. What we are doing with P4 is basically looking at the Visio, translating the Visio to P4 code, pressing a button, and getting a software switch, okay? But this is not sufficient. We are in the context of SI. So when you do P4 program and you compile it, you get a software simulation that has P4 APIs or PI. And so these guys actually, one writes the P4 and one writes the glue between the PI and SI interface. Okay? Next slide, please. So if we look at the, this is the architecture that we talk about. So there is SI behavioral model. It is described in the Visio, so we write the behavioral model in the code in P4 language. We press a button, we compile it, and we get, we get the, the soft switch on below. Okay? On top of that, we have the SI layer, uh, which is written in C++. The northbound of this layer is actually a SI API library that application can call that. And basically, you can run your protocol stack on top of that and forward packets, okay? Next slide. 
So what are we doing next? We, are, we have in mind the, the next two milestones that uh, uh, Omar and Jonathan are working on, our port and bridge. And then we're continuing along with the Psi Behavioral Model Visio to write code and enhance it to the next steps. And um, there, there is many places to go with that. I would really, really like to implement, the way to implement such a contract would be, from my perspective, take some kind of a certification program that you can able to run on top of that behavioral model and verify that the hardware for its packets aligned with the, uh, uh, the implementation based on side behavioral model as defined by the community. Okay, if we can take that to the, to the step, Basically, when I'm running those certification programs, I can verify that I'm running on top of a certified pseudo hardware, and then just switch, switch the hardware and uh, uh, get the functionality. Um, just, it's not here, but just a small note about the comment. There was vendor extensions raised a, a topic before. So there are two aspects of vendor extensions, two motivations for vendor extension. One is to run faster than the community, okay? Sometimes you, you need to get money out of that open source stuff, right? You need to get revenues to your managers. And some functionality is lacking within, within the current PSI API or whatever. So vendor extension is a very good way to enable something very fast and, and implement that and get the revenues and get that feature that you need. And then you can go back to the community and say, I want to contribute back that effort, okay? I just ran faster, and now let's formalize it. I know that it, it might be a throwaway code because I need to change my implementation, but basically I'm, I need to move, move fast and then I'll contribute it back. Another side of vendor extension is that basically what I want to do is I want to have some unique feature within that hardware that I know that other hardware vendors do not support. They might support in the future, but currently I want to use that and it exists only on one silicon, so let's use an extension for that silicon. Now, that's a bit of a tricky part, right? Because basically what you might end up in some other standard bodies like OpenFlow kind of fell off exactly at that pitfall where your vendor extending everything and you end up with a standard vendor extension interface, right? So we need to be very, very careful about extending per vendor a generic level of APIs. I'm very much for the first one. I'm a little bit, uh, uh, although I have unique features within my silicon as, as another on my other hat, so we need to be careful as a community not to take vendor extension to the extreme because that's exactly what I started with, the problem proposition or description the, the protocol stack uh, uh, contamination per silicon vendor. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so some of this, this is description of some of the issues that we have found during the implementation. We were using P4 um, 1.1.0 version. Within that version, some legacy extension within Psi behavioral model, you, look, you do bridge lookup at the ingress, you do the router, and you do the bridge lookup at the egress. Within the P4 version that we, we are using, you cannot go to the same table twice. So what you need to do in order to implement that, you need to crunch the data on the egress into the router, meaning that you need to reflect the port into the forwarding decision. That imposes some challenges um, and some deviation, I'm sure that Together with Barefoot and other P4 community, we can found the means to get P4 to address all those needs. Uh, um, and P4 is evolving. Um, now P4.16 is, is out there. We are studying, we are looking into it. We hope that it solves the problem. And if not, we will try to take it to the P4 community to, to find the solution for that. Basically, the way that uh, um, the behavioral model within the SI is implemented is every table has an ingress and an egress, okay? You go to the bridge, so your ingress, you ingress a bridge, you egress a bridge on a, on a, on a bridge port, okay? That, that bridge port may be the layer three interface to the router, which again, you ingress the router and you egress on another 
layer three interface that might go into a tunnel or go back down to a bridge. So every table has an ingress and egress site. Taking that, uh, um, currently implementing in P4, is challenging. But we hope to get workarounds on that. This is the last slide, and what, what is the end in mind that we are trying to get? And let's, let's go over the, the phases that we have. Now, I want to build a new protocol stack, or to add the protocol to my current protocol stack. So what do I do? So first of all, I code. I need to have VPLS in my, in my MPLS level stack, so I will write VPLS to my stack, right? Now, I look at SI API, and I say, does that functionality exist already? It doesn't exist, good. It's an open community. This is why we are sitting here, right? So we jump on the weekly call with Goan, and we say, and we shin, and we say, guys, we need to have this functionality. Is it on the roadmap? Is it already being addressed? No? Feel free to come up with your own proposition to the community and hit the flames with all the inputs that you get, of course. But that's the work that you're doing within the community. Okay, so propose, please propose uh, to the SAI community that proposition. <clears throat> then uh, if the SAI, if it exists in the, in the SAI, probably it will have already the implementation within the, the SAI behavioral model, okay, in P4. If not, you will need to do both, right? You will need to write both the proposition and the behavioral model implementation once we agree on the behavioral model. So now you have already your protocol stack. You have underlying software switch. All you need to do is run it, right? You, 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 build, you have now a software that emulates your switch even way before the silicon was taped out or the, somebody has take a board, put it on an ODM switch or whatever. So you, have, you can start immediately to run and verify your software that it works on top of that, okay? And then once it works, you can port it to any, any of your choice. And the S in red is the only place where I say, okay, now you can choose more than one ASIC. And of course, Mellanox believes that we have the best ASICs. So <laughs> thank you very much for your time. Questions? Go on. Thank you very much. So everybody heard? Or, so Microsoft have this already running in their booth. So it's a nice demo. Yes? I, I'm not sure that maybe we can pass microphones. Do we have another microphone? So can you? Yeah, very good. Yes. So it's a very good question. Um, the expectation is that under be below SI interface, it's vendor implementation, meaning that we understand that the 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 vendor, the ASIC vendor, will have its own ways to do, it might call an SDK, it might call a Linux and a driver within the, it doesn't make any difference. It, we do understand that underlying the, the hardware will have its own way of implementation, but logically wise, it must forward the packet based on the SI behavioral model. And yes, they might not, there might be features where you say, okay, I have tested it, I failed the SI behavioral model in this current silicon. I can list these are my functionalities, but at least you have an end in mind where you want to go with the implementation. Yes, please. Okay, I got two questions. Okay, uh, I got two questions. The first one, even Mellanox got the programmable device like the NPS, a bit like the barefoot and so on. Why not generate the C code toward the NPS? with this environment? That's my first question. So we might end up implementing that in uh, uh, the behavioral model within an NPS. But again, 
the, the, the motivation here is not that have a, a, a customer to test it on top of specific silicon. <coughs> the motivation here is that if you have a solution, you can really switch between underlying platforms and buy the platform that you need. If you need an NPS because you want to add on top of that more layer four seven functionality, which are currently not defined within SI, it's good. But if you want to have to move between s different switch silicons, that's the easiest, plat easiest way to do that. Okay, let's bring my second question. We're getting into a, vo in a world where things are changing extremely quickly. Operators want support for service function chaining with these network service center at wire speed. Some people want the Genev ID, but the full 32 bit address rather than 24 bit. Things are changing faster than traditional async vendor can keep up with. So that's the beauty of these programmable device that I'm talking about. And with these device, you can implement way more than basic switching and forwarding. You can stop all the L4 to L7 networking function. How can SAI keep up? Like I can take your Milanox NPS and implement zillion of function that is not currently covered by SAI. So it's very unclear to me how we will basically, without failing into the trap we were talking about of these vendor specific extension, be able to cover the complete networking stack, not only switching and forwarding. So basically you're asking two, two different questions and I'll try to address one and not to address the other one. One is talking about flexibility of the pipeline. This is a different topic. I'm not sure that this is what I'm trying to present here. What we are doing here is the implementation of underlying kind of fixed pipeline. We have taken building blocks that we have defined, multiple functionality of fixed pipeline, and implemented them in a P4 language, which one company in this room can take that and download to the switch, okay? But let's take flexible pipeline out of this topic. I'm really happy to talk to you about my personal talk, my personal thought about level of flexibility, but this is not the topic why I was called to, to stand here, so I don't want to take it to a Mellanox uh, versus barefoot discussion, okay? It's not, it's not right in my opinion. <laughs> um, uh, but I can wear any time out of this room my hat as a different, uh, in, in my day, day payroll uh, uh, task. And the other one that you were saying is really, really true. How do you progress, progress fast enough to address those market needs? So that's a very good question. So first of all, if, the mar if SAI is lacking, come and propose. And I know, I think everybody within the SAI tremendously capable community, and all the team, we have weekly calls. I apologize, I started not to address them lately, but we have very technical weekly calls. And you can see that uh, uh, when you need something to be derived fast, we know how to make, make a progress. Uh, quite fast when, in, when needed, sometimes not fast enough, but I think that we can do always do better. But I think that if you look at the rich feature set that has been done within basically size a year and a half, we have almost all functionality of a, a data center and even more uh, uh, worthy of a switch. So I think it is moving quite fast. Thank you. <coughs>